The media is suddenly figuring out that Bernie Sanders can actually win, something a lot of us figured out a long time ago. However, I'll take it. I will take it. Uh, this, this is a clip of Al Sharpton talking about Sanders' uh, strengths as a candidate, and it was especially fascinating. Bernie Sanders is the one candidate on the stage more than anyone else that people are supporting him because they believe in what he believes in. Yeah. He's not running as a politician. He's running as one leading a movement, and he says that. And I think that that is why he will remain in the top three, and that is why he's winning, because people are voting for what they believe in. Yes. I mean, Sharpton's late on this, but he's saying the most obvious fact. Um, and it's something that the DC pundit class still can't understand. Well, oh, it's all about triangulation and appearing a certain way for voters and then giving a crumb of pandering to this demographic and lying to this uh, type of person. Yet Bernie's politics aren't that. We all know that. And according to polling data, specifically in Iowa, my analysis of the situation and now Sharpton's um, is correct in saying that Sanders' staying power with voters is real. In Iowa and elsewhere, Sanders' tension with the party has served only to re-energize Mr. Sanders and his loyalists, who are faithful to him in a way that no other candidate's supporters are. While backers of other Democrats often list three or four contenders when asked to name their top choice, Mr. Sanders' fans are unwavering. Just a quick aside, I don't really have the specific polling data for, for Biden, but I would assume Biden is the polar opposite of that. A recent poll from the Des Moines Register showed that among likely Democratic Iowa caucus goers who said Mr. Sanders was their top choice, 57% said their minds were made up. According to the Register, no other candidate registered above 30%. Those figures alone could portend a strong showing for Mr. Sanders at the caucuses, where candidates must receive at least 15% support at a caucus site to collect that site's share of state delegates. So guys, two of the first three states are caucuses. There's Iowa, then there's New Hampshire, neighboring Bernie, that's not a caucus, but Bernie's gonna do well in New Hampshire too. And then Nevada, a caucus. Bernie could jump out to a really significant lead. And again, this buttresses my point that Sanders by far has the highest floor of any of the candidates. And that floor specifically in caucus states uh, like Iowa and Nevada, who that they, they rely on highly energized voter bases, that floor is much higher than an overwhelming majority of candidates could ever dream that their ceilings would be. Part of his durability is that he has 15 to 20% of the caucus who are absolutely committed to voting for him no matter what said John Grennan, the Democratic chairman in Powashik, uh, Sheik County, Iowa. In a field that's split between at least 10 major candidates, that 15 to 20% counts for a whole heck of a lot. Because his backers are so loyal, opponents have been unable to penetrate his base if they have tried to at all. Part of the reason is that Mr. Sanders' strategy revolves around engaging people who typically don't participate in the political process, a highly difficult group to target even the Sanders campaign acknowledges it is a risky strategy. Another factor is sheer resignation. His rivals just don't see the point in trying to pick off supporters who probably won't budge. So uh, Andrew Yang's similar in a sense because he uh, d certainly does not have the high floor, as high of a floor as Bernie Sanders, but he does have a floor that the establishment is underestimating because he's bringing new people into the political process. And look, obviously, Bernie Sanders is not the same as Trump. They are diametrically opposed as human beings. Please don't take it that way. Um, but we saw this in 2016 with Trump. They both have a core enthusiastic base of support that's not going anywhere. And the Democratic establishment is going to continue to dismiss Bernie Sanders in the way the Republican establishment dismissed Donald Trump. And when you bring new people into the political process who aren't gonna vote for other candidates and aren't going to be swayed, it's very hard to move that, especially as Bernie's name recognition grows and as his, or has grown, and as his ideas have become mainstream. So these are some signs that Bernie Sanders 
Ooh, I don't want to jinx it, but he, he he might just pull this thing off. 